Rise and Shine. Welcome back to Rise and Shine. You are with your favorite morning show, and we are on the last half an hour of our program. It's past seven o'clock, and we have a very interesting personality uh, to discuss about a quite um, current and pertinent topic uh, today. And this is Mr. Bandula Basinger, who is also an attorney at law, and he is a CEO of Zenith Immigration Inc. Canada, and he is a regulation Canadian immigration consultant. Who will be talking about. A uh, very controversial and much talked about topic, which is immigration, and we'll be discussing about the so-called, uh, how do I say this, um, taboo around the topic and how uh, there are a lot of misconceptions, you know, circulating this idea and how in the proper light, in the correct light, it is a quite an important resource and investment for us as a country. Uh, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Well, let's we start with the idea of immigration first uh, yes immigration actually is people moving from their country of birth to some other country mm -hmm. uh, mainly looking for better opportunities uh, let me uh, uh, begin with uh, some something different you know the as a, uh, I want to relate that to the uh, this immigration and its benefits and losses to the country now, uh, if you talk about an electric car, and uh, we all we all know our our uh, perception is electric car is actually a uh, benefit. It's a it saves money, it saves the environment. Actually, in reality, in Sri Lanka, electric cars run on diesel. I mean, I am talking not about the hybrid I cars. Yes. I am not talking about the hybrid total. 100% electric cars. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason being, uh, in Sri Lanka actually we have an, uh, this uh, power problem, power shortage. Now uh, only 23% of power is produced uh, through hydro uh, power generation and 37% uh, from uh, diesel uh, powered plants and another 40% from coal power. So in reality, electric cars burns diesel. Now we think electric cars save money and save the environment, but we uh, burn uh, diesel uh, to run the electric car. Now in reality, uh, actually, petrol cars are better than the electric car. Now um, why why I told about this is we have a uh, lot of misconceptions, myths, perceptions that are not right. So this is the truth and the reality. I mean the reality and the perception may be different. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, migration, uh, let me uh, give you the statistics about the foreign remittances to Sri Lanka. Okay. Uh, we all know the main foreign exchange earner for Sri Lanka is uh, the remittances, the people sending money. Who are sending this money to Sri Lanka? If I ask anybody this question every, almost everybody would say the people working in the Middle East mm -hmm. uh, let me give you the statistics uh, in 2017 uh, Sri Lanka received about 7.2 billion US dollars as remittances out of this only 52 percent came from uh, the Middle East that is uh, 3.7 billion mm -hmm. the balance uh, the rest of the money came from the countries other than the Middle East. That is about 3.4 billion, so basically half. Mm. The 48% and percent came from? 47%, um, uh, 48% came from uh, countries other than the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So this is against, I mean, again, this is uh, not the perception. I mean, we have, we all think almost yes. all the money come from the, the Middle East. East. And now, actually, the money coming from the, now, now this relates to migrants the uh, most of the money other money like about 3.4 billion 3.7 billion comes from the middle east uh, most of the 3.4 billion comes from the uh, from the developed countries from the migrants now uh, with the money coming from the middle east there's a huge social cost because the families are separated 
and children are wasted and a lot of every day we can i i saw on sunday uh, single is a main uh, newspaper on the uh, on page 3 they are talking all, all not only that every day uh, in the papers we can see sad stories about this but the migrants the money migrants are sending uh, because they live with uh, the families there is no uh, social cost uh, now if uh, now it is a fact that migration is a brain drain that is true but uh, for a country like ours uh, now it has become uh, actually an essential income now if we just imagine if we uh, brought all those immigrants back to Sri Lanka, what would happen? Uh, we would lose about $3 billion that is coming from them. Not only that, uh, actually it is a double jeopardy situation. Uh, they, we will have to send more and more mothers to the Middle East to cover that uh, loss actually. Other than that, uh, we have to get uh, foreign loans, otherwise you know, the, either we have to send more mothers uh, at a huge social cost or uh, otherwise we have to get uh, foreign loans and actually I have seen some uh, newspaper reports uh, every citizen in Sri Lanka is uh, uh, indebted to the world about for 417,000 or no, some uh, more than that amount so in a in a country like this uh, I mean all the political parties uh, I mean everybody is in agreement that uh, we have uh, this foreign debt problem in us in a in that context i am talking about brain drain is not a good thing but in that context uh, we uh, need uh, this kind of money coming from the migrants actually skilled people uh, if we uh, say a housemaid as i again as i said uh, at a huge social cost if she is sending about 50,000 rupees to Sri Lanka, a skilled person uh, employed in a country like Canada or US or UK, they will be sending much more money. Actually, they are sending money to their parents, to relations. They visit Sri Lanka. They donate to Sri Lanka. Uh, that kind of um, uh, more, more positive money and more clean money coming uh, from the migrant side. Uh, because of that, I think... Uh, uh, we, uh, as a nation, it is actually tragic. Uh, our people have to go. I, I myself is a migrant, actually. Mm -hmm. and But I have come back to Sri Lanka. I am now doing something back to the country. And uh, another thing, before I go, back, I go back to that thing, now, think about exports or oh, in industries, tourism. Now, we there is a cost of production. Uh, uh, the money remitted by the uh, migrants and even the temporary workers, there's no cost of pr production. And the other thing, if we bring all those back to Sri Lanka, we have to give them jobs. We have to give them education, their children. We have to uh, give them health care, roads, resources. So it is more cost for us. Exactly. And the resource mm -hmm. distribution as well, because more people come, the influx of more people, then the exhaustion of resources is higher in the country. Exactly. And uh, also, uh, getting to know that um, even to compensate for the brain drain, besides the cash inflow, what is the other investment we get as a country from skilled migrants? Yeah, that's a very good question. Now, this is actually a, a very hidden thing. Now, I, I'll give you uh, two examples. Uh, now, I have this paper cut in. This is about three brothers who migrated to Canada, uh, setting up a plant in Mirigama processing zone. Actually, they are from the north. They went to Canada in 1983. and But now they are doing an international business uh, in the Mirigama, uh, I think, uh, free trade zone. Now, uh, another example, uh, the Glen Rock Hotel in Beluhulwe. Now, uh, it has only 10 rooms. Now, they are catering to uh, only the high-end market. And 90 or 95 percent are foreigners. In a very small village without damage in the social fabric. Uh, that has been developed to attract foreign investments. So, these are smart ventures. Now, both these 
ventures are operated and invested by migrants. migrants. Actually, this the Glenrock, uh, I have been operating, I have been developing this as a model for tourism, uh, not to not to attract the money that circulates in, within Sri Lanka. We are targeting the foreigners and we are giving all, with, with only 10 rooms. Now, uh, when this venture uh, operates at the optimum level, the income we project is about 600,000 US dollars every year. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take uh, now, even the other the three brothers I mentioned about coming from Canada, setting up, they also are doing something like There are other isolated uh, uh, examples like that. And now, if I speak about this uh, in particular, about the Glen Rock in Belihul Loya, now uh, 600,000 US dollars, if we can, we have thousands of migrants abroad. Now, I myself is a migrant. Now, I have come back and I have invested. I am doing something for the country. Like that, if we have a plan, if we tap this resource, this is a totally untouched resource. Uh, rather than we are complaining about brain drain, if we, if we realize this potential, say uh, 10,000 people like uh, this coming into Sri Lanka and setting up, Smart ventures. Different ventures. Smart Covering ventures. Covering a lot of areas. Exactly. Not, not the hotels. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you some, uh, some examples of smart ventures. Uh, let me give the math. Uh, $600,000 into 10,000 uh, small ventures. This is not a big venture. 10-room 10, 10 hotel is $6 billion US dollars. This is almost the money uh, we are, the, all the foreign workers are sending to Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. This is more than the money we earn through tourism. Mm -hmm. now, uh, now, now there is a question now. What is a smart venture? Uh, smart ventures, now let me give you an example. I met a uh, foreigner. He was sitting next to me on the uh, airplane. And I happened to talk to him and he was telling, I'm going to Sri Lanka, this is my 19th time or whatever. Uh, uh, I am actually going to do, we are doing mining, mining graphite. So, only thing I knew about graphite was uh, when we studied in school, we had a subject called Rate Sampat, mm -hmm. right? So, in that, uh, we knew Kahata Gahapatala, Bo Gahapatala. That's all I knew. I, and I knew that in the pencils, we use uh, uh, graphite. Now, uh, in this uh, conversation, I learned so, so many things. He said, uh, Actually, uh, this uh, graphite in Sri Lanka is, uh, is called actually very refined graphite. It's uh, the best quality graphite we have in Sri Lanka. We sell them uh, as raw material. Uh, then they take it, they buy it, uh, I think about uh, $1,500 per ton. Now, he said they, they process it and they use it. I asked, wh wh what are you using this uh, graphite for? in the lithium batteries, in the airplane engines, in jets and some other like uh, smart things. Now they are using this um, uh, graphite, they develop it into process, me uh, through mechanical processing, they develop it. Now once they have developed it, it uh, they sell it for $9,000 per ton, about six times higher than the, the money we are getting. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, then comes the question whether we have that uh, knowledge. They are also the, actually the migrant community. Now we are exposed, the migrants, we have a lot of, I, I have been um, uh, actually in this, uh, uh, operating this uh, Zenith immigration uh, for uh, 19 years. We are the pioneer immigration law firm. We have a lot of people, uh, we have a lot of friends, a huge network. I know how knowledgeable these people are because they were exposed to the world, developed world. Now, uh, when uh, I happened to get a personality from a TV channel to my hotel and he said, uh, he didn't know that, you know, that I was a migrant. He said, you know, this, uh, after talking to me, he learned that I was a migrant. Now, he said, you know, I can see, uh, actually, I, I, I saw something different in this because that is your exposure to the world. Mm -hmm. So, this, uh, now, 
graphite making 1500 dollar ton we are selling raw material making it into 9000 dollars we can use our own migrants mm -hmm. not we don't need uh, foreign, foreign experts export products. yeah so this is why i am telling this is a uh, highly un, un uh, tapped unknown hidden pressure this is it's an interesting yeah. cycle i mean you start as 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 a local and you go to the foreign country you learn something out of a new so company it's, it's it's an interesting cycle it's a very important cycle. And also the new kind of concepts, the technology we bring in, the new ways of thinking we bring into the country is yeah, also something yeah. that reinforces <coughs> a lot of things that could happen here as well. So that's something that's very something very interesting. Not just not just thinking about the cash inflow and you know not thinking about just the money perspective, but just think about all the other. It's, it's actually like a long-term investment in that sense. I mean, you talk about it because what what you, what you mentioned is that you know the cash flow, it, it's quick cash. It's 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 bound to go off, and then it it's, it's keeps coming in, and but then again, it's at a, it's at a slow pace. And it's, it's not a future investment, but if you can, you know, pick in a different way and make that long term investment, it's going to be benefit us for the for I don't know thousands and thousands of years to come. That's exactly. true, and then with that, definitely that's something for you to look forward to. Yep. And uh, with that, we want to thank. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for joining with us on the show and for. Um, kind of you know enlightening us with this valuable information because this is something that a lot of people don't look into as much this is something very indirect very undelayed uh, mm -hmm. kind of an influence that we have by foreign employment so this is something to think about uh, this is one way you can serve your country by being uh, far away from home mm -hmm. so something to look into so much of exciting and also things that happen. should be discouraged and, and, and shunned and not talked about that's true because it's going to be the future and if you make a good investment and a good uh, let me uh, let me tell yes. just one thing now remember i mentioned uh, 600000 dollars we earn yeah. from this one smart venture small one uh, if we get 10000 people we can do that as i said we have the network and but they need the conducive environment for that mm -hmm. that is 6 billion dollars every year 6 billion dollars into 11 years is 66 billion dollars it is our foreign debt. We can s settle the whole foreign debt by utilizing the, this uh, mm. uh, potential. Actually, yeah. we don't have to look for. We don't have to sell national assets. And we, have we to, don't. We don't have to get more, more uh, uh, <laughs> loans to cover exactly. that amount. So exactly, it's yeah. gonna be, the cycle can be broken. Exactly, the vicious cycle broken. can be broken. Yeah. So hopefully the next decade will be somewhere where we'll will be improvising into this untapped potential we have. And with yeah. that thought, it's time for us to, is it time for us to wrap up? It yeah. is time for us to wrap up, and, and it was a very informative, a very enlightened discussion. I think that should, everybody should be taking very, very seriously. Uh, and it's a quite a change for a Wednesday uh, morning, because we usually t t bring this artist and artistic personality. Uh, it is, while it's important, it's, it's important to know uh, that there are um, um, <clears throat> other personalities out there who is really, really um, in the crux of the matter, uh, helping us out and developing our country and bringing something back into our country with uh, the experience. Uh, this was Mr. Bandula Basing, attorney at law, and he's a regulated cons Canadian immigration consultant who is the CEO of the Zenith Immigration Inc. Canada, who enlightened us uh, for half an hour. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, for coming on the show. And with that, it's time for Hiroshi and I to say bye-bye on this beautiful Wednesday morning. Have a good day. Have a productive day. Have an enlightened day. And we're going to see you tomorrow, same time. Goodbye.